Well, it's a good thing I'm a carpenter. Not only am I gonna show you how to fix up this water damage baseboard back to brand new, I'm also gonna share a couple of tips to make sure this never happens in the future. So for a water damage baseboard, you have a couple of options here. The first option is to repair it in place without taking it off. Now, if you just had a small little section that was damaged, what you could do is you could scrape off the water damage, fill it, prime it, sand it, and then paint over it. It would probably look pretty decent, but for this baseboard here, it is water damaged all the way along. It's gonna to be too much of a pain to repair that in place. So what we're gonna do is take that off, and then that way you'll also see we can seal the bottom of the baseboard so that this never happens again. So when it comes to removing baseboards, you have to be extremely careful. The last thing you wanna do is start pulling this off break the baseboard, start tearing the drywall paper up here. If you start getting into damaging this section up here, then you've got a paint repair to do up top. Before you know it, you're repainting the bathroom. Next thing you know, Homes on Home shows up and you're tearing the house down. <laughs> so take your time here. First step is you wanna get your knife out and just cut along this top edge nice and carefully. Take your time. Just cut in the corner here too. A lot of times they put caulking in the corner to hide any gaps. And then what I like to do is just get this red bar, get this thing slid in here, and then just keep an eye if there's any sections that need to get cut a little more, just work your way along. Because what ends up happening if you're not careful and you don't cut it all the way, it pulls and then it pulls out this paper section. So we've got the baseboard all taken off nice. We have not damaged the wall. Next step, take this down to the garage and we're gonna sand off the water damage. When it comes to baseboards in the bathrooms, the ones in my bathrooms are MDF, which is not ideal in the bathroom setting. Yeah, if you take a look at this little test case here, you can see the difference between MDF and wood baseboards. These two little baseboard chunks have been sitting in this water for about three days now. Yeah, if you take a look at the MDF, you can see it's just all swollen. The water just absorbs into it. If you look at the wood, I mean the wood, it's, nothing's really happened to it. So at this point in the procedure, if you have the means and you can find a wood baseboard that kind of matches the rest of the MDF baseboards in your house, you may want to just grab some wood baseboards and swap out the bathroom. But if you don't have the means to cut the pieces, nail the pieces on, or you're not looking to spend a bunch of extra money, we're going to fix up this MDF baseboard and we'll also seal the bottom edge so that this will never happen in the future. And when it comes to sanding, the best bet is going to be an orbital sander with some 120, 150 grit sandpaper. You can also get away with just a sanding block. The sanding sponge will come in handy later on, as you'll see, but it's not going to be great for sanding off this damaged material. So now that we've got that all nice and sanded flat, you can still see it's a little bit rough along the area that I sanded. Now before we hit this with some primer, you also want to just make sure you get any of the loose bits off. You can pretty much just use your fingernail to take the loose bits of caulking off. Give this a little wipe off here. Now for a primer, what you want to use is this Ben Zinser shellac base primer. Now the reason why the shellac base stuff, I think it's an alcohol base actually, it's a lot better than a water-based primer because it's not going to want to raise the fibers of this wood. And then in terms of brushes, that is the one thing that is a bit of a pain. You have to clean the brushes with ammonia and water or even methyl hydrate. What I end up doing is just getting some cheap brushes. In between uses, I just wrap them up tightly with saran wrap and then I put an elastic around the little metal piece so no air gets in. And while we're also priming it here, we'll also go ahead and fill the nail holes in. This is just some white wood filler. All right, so we'll quickly let that dry. It takes about 30 minutes. I'm gonna put it right by the heat register, probably be done in 10. 
So yeah, that's all dried up. It dried very quickly. I think it took about 15 minutes. So in between coats here, a primer, the best thing to sand this down with is a nice little sanding sponge. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna seal up this bottom edge of the baseboard so that it can't get damaged in the future. I did a little test here with these two baseboards, MDF. Now I sealed the bottom one of this one up and this one was not sealed. They both sat in the water for about three days. This one is FUBAR and this one here is you know, it's perfectly fine. The water did not absorb into the baseboard. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to our baseboard. And to do that, I'm gonna seal it up. This is what I use for all my caulking. It's called Dynaflex 230. You don't wanna get it all over the front, but you definitely wanna get enough on there. So we'll hit that with one more coat of primer. So I gave the piece one more quick little sand up. The bottom is all nice and dry. That's all sealed, so it'll never suck up any more water. Um, yeah, you can see the piece, it's back to 100%. You can't even notice any of the water damage on the bottom there. So now what you'd wanna do is you would want to install the piece, caulk it, and then give it one quick coat of trim paint. There's only one problem that I'm having here, and that is I lent my nail gun to my so-called friend, and he never gave it back. So if you want to see how to install a baseboard without a nail gun, click on this video right here. We'll see you over there. <sighs> Leroy, seriously buddy, never lending you any more tools.